Choosing a rebreather can be a complex, anxiety-ridden journey. In this video, I'm not going to tell you which rebreather you should buy. Instead, we are purely looking at the path that you should walk to make your own informed decision. Roll intro. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divers Ready. My name's James, and it is, as always, so great to see all of your smiling faces. If you feel like making your next dive on our subscribe button, that would mean the world to me. But you don't have to. This video is all about making your own choices. Now, you are probably watching this as either a very experienced and competent recreational diver, or as a qualified and regimented open circuit technical diver, and you're interested in perhaps maybe going the CCR route. Either way, you want to take your diving to the next level, and maybe you've already promised yourself a rebreather. Maybe you've already read Jill Heiner's excellent The Basics of Rebreather Diving, link in the description below, book I highly recommend, and have familiarized yourself with a new glossary of terms like scrubber and DSV and BOV so you can now speak the language of rebreathers. With dozens of commercially available CCRs on the market and a large amount of money on the line, how do you choose a rebreather that you will be happy with? Well, between the cost of the unit and the training involved, getting into rebreather diving is a huge commitment of time and money. So you want to choose wisely. Trouble is, there is so much cloudy information out there. You can go down countless forum rabbit holes and discover online shouting matches as to why insert name of rebreather is the best rebreather, blah, 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 blah. So let me try and guide you, give you some structure in your search, not towards buying the rebreather that I dive, but to help you find the rebreather that is right for you. And yes, I will be using the cliched car analogy. So what is the best rebreather? No, dude, you just said, look, bear with me. I drive a pickup truck because I run a diving company. I am not a truck dude. If I had a boring office job, I would probably get myself something sporty and German. But a truck is the right vehicle for the job that I do. I have a nice truck with comfort and performance enhancing features. My truck is two wheel drive because I don't tow anything ever. And I live in Florida, which is as flat as a pancake. And I can afford the truck and I can afford the maintenance it requires. Are you following me? Good. When you're picking a CCR, it works the exact same way. What features do you want? What features do you not want? and how much money do you have? You might have German sports car desires, but Korean shitbox money. So either make peace with your Korean shitbox or make slash save more money. Of course, I own and dive and teach on a dive soft Liberty. I like it a lot. Is it the best? Best at what? The best for me and my type of diving? Yeah, I'm very happy with it. The best for you? Who am I to say? Only you can answer that, and once you've read Jill's fantastic rebreather book, make notes on features you're interested in and make a list of your questions. Then you need to be real about your budget for buying a unit and add about 10% for additional accessories and then bear in mind the budget for training as well. Nobody ever talks about this, but when you're going to want to buy new fins for your CCR, maybe a new bailout regulator, transmitters if you don't already have them, you're buying your unit, which leads to desire for more parts and accessories. Hey, I didn't make the rules. But now you have a budget amount and a list of features that you want. That should help you narrow the field substantially. So what's next? Well, next I would ask myself the question, okay, on this short list of rebreathers that I'm considering, how reliable and stable are the manufacturers as companies themselves? Just like buying a car, reliability is a key deciding factor for your new ten dollars to $15,000 purchase. But as with any advanced technology, rebreathers break from time to time. When they break, how easy is it to get parts? Hell, how easy is it to get someone on the phone from the manufacturer to even order parts? Unlike most major car companies, CCR manufacturers do not shift large enough volumes of their units to employ customer service teams or 24-hour tech support. Amazingly, still, some rebreather companies consist of one guy in a garage knocking together rebreathers. And whilst that one guy might be, and in often cases is, an engineering genius, what happens if your rebreather 
breaks and you can't get hold of that one guy? Or what happens if something happens to that one guy? Can you still get parts? Can you get service? So as an exercise, I'd recommend calling the rebreather companies on your shortlist or sending them an email through their website. How long does it take them to respond? Does anyone answer the phone? If you struggle to get a response when you're a potential customer of theirs, how helpful do you gonna be once they've already got your money in their pockets? So you've got a short list of CCRs, what's next? Demos, try dives, demo as many units as you can. Go to tech diving events and try units out. Go to CCR week or tech week in Bon Air. Go to any event or festival where you can try CCRs on your short list. There are certain factors to decide to do, there. Be, 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 be. Ah. There are certain factors to decide which unit is right for you that you can only discern in the water. A website isn't gonna tell you how the unit is gonna sit on you. How does it feel? Is it too long or too short for your body type? How does the trim feel? How does the weight feel? How does the work of breathing feel? You're not gonna get that by looking at a glossy brochure. So these are things you can only tell by actually try diving units. And yes, this adds time to the process, but it gives you a greater chance of finding CCR true love. Now, I've dived about 12 different CCRs, and the Dive Soft Liberty is my favorite. Yes, lots of people out there will tell you that their CCR is the best. Ask them, how many CCRs have you dived? Usually they say, just this one, it's the best. Okay then. But should you pick a unit or pick an instructor? It's a debate as old as time. If you're new to this game, let me explain the state of CCR instruction. Imagine you're a driver's ed instructor. You're teaching student drivers in your Volvo C90. Your students, once they pass their tests, can then only drive a Volvo C90. No other makes, no other models, not even different Volvos. That's how CCR instruction works. It is unit specific. So I'm certified to teach the Divesoft Liberty backmount. I can teach the classic light or heavy versions of the Divesoft Liberty. Think of these as kind of like trim options, but I cannot teach, for example, the side mount unit, even though it's made by Divesoft. So do you choose a CCR instructor you want to teach you and just buy whichever unit they teach, or do you buy the unit you want and then search for an instructor on that unit? B. Always be, buy the unit, find the instructor. Here's why. At the end of the training, you're left with the unit. It has to be the right CCR for you. Your instructor's gonna go on to other things and you've got the unit and that's your unit and now you're gonna go and dive it. So you have to love it, you have to want to dive it, you have to miss it when you can't dive it and dive it whenever you can. You may have your local guy at your dive shop who is a super cool instructor, you know them, they're super nice dude, but the unit they're qualified to teach might not be the right unit for you. So if you don't love diving that CCR, it's just gonna sit in your closet or garage and then end up going on the second hand market and you're gonna lose some money on it and just end up frustrated. If you don't believe me, go check the second hand market for list of people's expensive paperweights that they got bored of looking at. So decide on the unit and then find the instructor. The absolute best way to find an authorized CCR instructor is through the CCR manufacturer. Normally they'll have a list on their website. And then, as with any dive course, speak to a bunch of different instructors for the unit that you've chosen and find the one whose teaching style and location you believe best suits your learning style and budget. So let's recap of the quick steps so far. Read Joe Heiner's book so you familiarize yourself with the glossary of rebreather terms and you can speak the language and know what you're talking about. Make a list of the features you want, set your budget, verify the stability and service of the manufacturers. Make a short list of units that meet your criteria. Demo dive as many units as possible on that short list. Be prepared for this process to take a lot of time. Choose your unit and then choose your instructor for your unit. Next step, go train, get your course done. And now, here's the biggest tip in this whole entire video. Embrace the suck. You were a solid open circuit diver. You were confident in your skills and now you've gone closed circuit and everything you knew has changed and now you suck. <laughs> it is what it is, it's okay, I'm here to tell you, it's okay to suck. As the great prophet Axel Rose once sang, all you need is just a little patience. Give yourself 30 hours, 30 hours on the unit to get yourself right. I can't tell you how many secondhand rebreathers I see for sale and the ad says, 
like new, dived for five hours. Yeah, because they dove it for five hours, they, they sucked at it, and they didn't stick with it and push through, and now they're just getting rid of the unit and losing money, and it's just a waste. So you're gonna hate yourself, you're gonna suck. I know what I'm talking about because that was me, but you're gonna have days where you curse the money you spent on the thing, patience and persistence. And then, somewhere around the 30 hour mark, it takes more for some people and less for others, everything will click and you'll be a CCR diver. Thanks so much for watching. Jill Heiner's book is linked in the description of this video below, so grab yourself a copy and enjoy your journey. And if you are a certified CCR diver, jump into the comment section and let me know, is that the sort of process that you followed? Did you get lucky with your rebreather? Are you on your second rebreather because you didn't like your first one? Or anything that I've missed in the journey for someone picking their first rebreather? Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. It really helps us out to keep making these videos. And I'll see you next week. Dive safe, dive often.